Hi guys, we are getting ready. This is Mixed Media Minutes with Finavar and we are going to work on the box like this. This is cute, altered box, perfect for treasures and just waiting for more people to show up and then you have a perfect look at my um, messy table. This is how it works here. So you can see I am not really good in organizing my stuff. So yeah. Then there's assistant sleeping. Mm -hmm. And then it's me and my husband in the back. <laughs> Hi guys, it's good to see you here. And um, well, welcome to my studio, and this is going to be Mix Media Minutes, the Galaxy Box. And this show is going to be um, about um, quick techniques with um, basic art mediums and paints, which you can buy now at Michael stores, or you can get them from your local craft stores all over the world. And they are all sold in single jars. And then um, at Michael's you can find them in nice multi-packs. So this is going to be great for those of you who would like to see what you can do with the product. And for those of you who are uh, really new to mixed media and you would like to try some really cute um, project to start. And um, I will try to see what you are um, asking me during the show, of course. But uh, if you will be that kind and leave the messages on the bottom that will be very helpful for me too and if you have any questions feel free to ask and in a, a moment we are going to start so just to get ready the box is here the supplies are here and let me explain everything for you okay so the plan is to alter the mini ATC box like this uh, I call it the galaxy box because I was trying to create the feeling that it is like a starry night with a lot of uh, beautiful little shiny stars and of course some steampunk effects on the top. And I'm going to bring the supplies and show you what you can use to make this project first and then we will go through it together. This is not complicated, it's really fun to do, so I hope you will have great time. First of all, you need a box, and this was one of the ATC boxes that you can get at Michael's. And inside there are ATC cards. I was using the black box, and of course you can use any color as long as you are going to paint it you know, black. So this is no problem, you can use black acrylic paint or gesso. You need some embellishments. My choice were mechanicals from the set and some hearts basically one heart from this set uh, you will need a stencil so my choice here that was uh, the bubble um, stencil that comes in a set uh, like this and this design was available before so you can find it in the craft stores for sure maybe in a slightly larger size Next ingredient, we will need art stones. So I'm going to use the art stones in medium size and in mini. We are going to use stone effect paste. Just one of many. We are going to use this art basics essential kit. We are going to use uh, 3D gloss gel, black gesso, and we are going to use soft gel from this kit. But you can easily replace them with the jars that were on the market uh, before. You can get them in single tubes now. You can get them in jars, so there will be no problem at all. And uh, of course we need some paints. So I picked the set which is called Stark's Fantasy. Sparks Fantasy because I wanted to use the unicorn hair color and I wanted to use um, Opal Magic Unicorn set. There are two colors that I really wanted to use on my black and if you would like to replace these colors because you're thinking you don't have this set in your local store, maybe you are in Europe or Australia, 
you can use other colors. You can use, for example, violet green, or you, and you can use yellow blue. They're going to do the very same job for you. So let me get organized. We're going to start in a moment. I'm a little worried because I can't see any uh, any comments from you, so I have to just hope everything is fine. I will try to get ready quickly. So first, we need a box and we need um, a brush. Kosur, podaj mi swój telefon na chwilę. Okay, so this is the stencil I was mentioning. This is the one with the bubbles. Okay, and then we had um, the plan to use stone effect paste to create these lovely textures you can see on the box first in the background. So uh, the first thing, of course, you will need a palette knife or use something similar to that to spread it nicely on your box. I, I will be cheating a little bit because I made part of that box already. You can see this is a stone effect paste after drying and I will just do the front for you so you can see it nicely. And uh, we are starting now in a moment. I just try to figure out if you can see me or not. Okay, I guess you can, so that would be really good. But can you hear me? Can you? I guess you can, so that would be really good. But can Okay, so we checked, everything is fine. <laughs> I had to use my husband's phone. So, let's start right now. And uh, the first step, of course, as I told you, we need to do something with uh, the background to make it look more uh, galaxy-like. So I picked two jars of stone effect paste. This is called limestone and this is concrete. And you will see they have really lovely sandy texture inside. What is great about these, you can add some color into them if you plan to make colorful texture projects. And uh, for my project, it doesn't really matter because I'm going to paint them anyway. So I just take a bit of each color, more of the smooth, uh, smoother one, more of the limestone. And then I'm going to apply that on my box. So a bit of the limestone and a bit of the concrete. So the bubble stencil, this is the uh, very cute size. This is the uh, size that is coming uh, more like for the journal pages, I think. But you will find this one in bigger sizes in the local stores too. And then a uh, silicone brush, which I use instead of the palette knife. Okay, so, and then we just add some of the texture on the top of our box. This is water-based paste very nice and coarse when you touch it. Remember, if you have very detailed stencil, something which is very, very intricate, don't pick very coarse paste from this uh, set. Try to pick the one which is uh, more fine and then the results will be more pleasing. It, um, there are three different uh, sets, uh, sorry, three different uh, part, uh, jars in the kit and uh, the coarseness is different in each one. So. You have to clean the stencil now, of course, because it's water-based, it's not a problem. You can take a baby wipe and wipe it down. Okay. And before we are going to move to the next step, of course, we have to uh, dry it with the heat gun. Good news is it dries quickly, so you don't have to worry you're going to uh, wait for a long time. So I just set up the drying. Oh. Believe it or not, it's dry enough to work on the next step. I'm just going to put 
non-stick mat now, so we won't have any problems with um, cleaning the uh, self-healing mat later. We have our box all covered in nice texture. This is the one that you are going to see later as a part of our galaxy. Now we have to put the elements which will go on the top. Some nice embellishment, something that is going to uh, attract the attention. So I was picking the um, embellishments that come in two sets, the steampunk gears and then the hearts. So this is the... <laughs> Selection for today. I have some uh, paper clips, um, as you can see, um, not very, uh, you know, high end. Then uh, this is one of the cogs. This is exactly the one I used here. Then we have the. Then some of the gears, and a little heart. The colors doesn't matter, it, sorry, the color doesn't matter here because we are going to paint everything anyway. So let's say the plan is to go exactly as we have it here to make it simple for everybody. So, you know, we are planning our design more or less like this. When you're doing the uh, dimensional composition, if you're planning to do uh, some nice work uh, with uh, dimensional chipboards or metal you need to have right adhesive to make it easier for you so i think the best solution really is to use gel mediums instead my favorite one is heavy body gel but you can also use the 3d gel or modeling paste for gluing so let's say this set will be like this and we will stick the heart on the top that's the plan So the 3D gloss gel, the one that comes in the essential pack, is going to be our adhesive. And the truth is you have to be quite generous. So you don't have to stop yourself too early. Just remember, uh, it's going to work almost like uh, the glue you use for mounting the tiles in the kitchen on the wall. So if the wall is not straight, you have to put more of the glue. The same thinking comes here. So I will just take a bit of the gel. I will try to arrange something nice. And then again, after that, we are going to dry it with the heat gun. So, hmm. You can, of course, use the um, tip of your palette knife for gluing. But uh, to be honest, I never do that. I always glue with my fingers. It's much easier for me. It, of course, makes nice um, manicure impossible, but um, because I work with my hands anyway, I don't care that much. So I'm just adding elements I like. Oh, this way will be easier. And you don't have to worry about these big blobs here. They will be covered anyway. Just look at this. And here is a bit of patience factor. So sometimes you just have to wait for gel to dry. That's why heavy body gel is my <laughs> very favorite because it dries so much quicker. Okay, this is not official technique, but if it's annoying for you, you can just simply <laughs> get rid of some of these. So it's going to be shorter. Yeah, that's going to be perfect solution. Oh, this one is a little bit more sturdy. Okay, done. So you can see, even if it's done with metal, you can still change it into something else. Maybe some more of the paper clips on the other side. Ah, it would be much easier this way, sorry. So I hope, guys, you are still watching and you're wondering probably why I'm so messy with my projects. But uh, so the, really the answer is gel medium is perfect adhesive and it's absolutely permanent after drying, but it's very hard to apply it in a precise way. So it's just more simple for me to work this way. 
and then clean the excess if I have some extras or cover that with paint later. And of course, we also need a little heart. It goes here, in the very middle. Ale wiesz, tam się tak te komentarze nie wyświetlają. Nie ma żadnego. Musisz spróbować jeszcze raz. <laughs> okay, so this is the plan. And before we are going to dry it, we would like to cover some of these imperfections on, or simply remove them. So let me show you closer look. It's very dirty now. So, well, not the most beautiful creation, but it doesn't have to be pretty now. It has to be pretty in the very end. Uh, I always try to tell my students that if they are stressing out during the process, it's not important how you start, it's important how you finish. So now we are going to use uh, more of this gel. I will try to organize this a little bit more to add extra in some places. And then I will be able to sprinkle art stones on the top. When I was explaining the mixed media line um, in the previous Facebook Live, there were questions how to use art stones. And there are many ways of using them. One of them is uh, mixing them inside of the gel to create texture paste. Here's the big jar of the art stones, the mini art stones. You can see how nice they are. Very lightweight. And these are the regular size of art stones. You can hear they are not heavy. So these ones, uh, they are in the kit like this, available at Michael's now. So please check because um, there are three different sizes in uh, in this kit. So you have like a perfect start if you start if you would like to make the project with different. Uh, sizes something almost like pearls and then little stones and the mini stones so mixing in is one of the options especially great for the mini ones or like i'm doing now i'm just a uh, able to sprinkle sprinkle them on the top of my um, project and it will stick to gel medium the tr the truth is my 3D gel and my soft gel and my modeling paste and also the heavy body gel are very strong adhesives, which means uh, it's not, not, nothing surprising if you used gel medium before, but these are done extra sticky. So um, we added extra ingredient inside, like extra glue ingredient to make sure I will be able to use it for my favorite collage techniques. And uh, you probably know that I like gluing heavy stuff on the top of the uh, project. So it has to be something really fast drying, something really heavy and something which is going to provide a bit of flexibility after drying too, because uh, you know what happens if you're trying to pull uh, dimensional <laughs> elements of your project. It is sometimes a very... Hmm, hard to keep them in place so gel medium is a very good solution so first I add bigger art stones for extra texture right you will see them here somewhere under the paint if you look cl closer right you can see you have to go from here to here <laughs> hmm. and to finish that nicely I just sprinkle mini stones in between. If you can, you can tap them a little bit with your finger. Oh, now we found the solution. We, I think I'm able to see you on the side here. Oh, okay, hi guys, I can see your comments now, yay! Okay, 
So you can see I'm tapping and tapping to make sure these little guys will stick. And I told you, gel medium is going to keep them in place. Now I have to remove the excess. Excess, but not the gear. <laughs> it was a little bit too much. And okay, that stays in place. If you cover too much, of course, before you will start drying, that will be the great moment to take off some of the extras. And remember to put your brush back in the water after that, uh, because uh, simply, as I told you, gel medium is strong adhesive and it's going to try to kill your brush after drying. So if you can, try to be careful and remember to brush in the water. Okay, I think the design is really what we wanted. Now the most boring part, we have to dry it before we will move to the next step. So please forgive me for a moment of heat uh, gun work here on this project. And in the meantime, I can answer some questions if you have any. So guys, we are using the products which are uh, parts of my um, well Prima uh, line. So we have mechanicals, we have stone effect paste, we are using 3D gel and we are using uh, products such as gesso and stone effect paste also some paints to create a box which is going to look like this and of course in the meantime we are also adding some special ingredients so you can see the art stones here these are these guys and the trick is all these products you can see in this project you can now buy at Michael's so people in Canada and United States you have the opportunity to get them in nice multi packs great selection for all your mixed media needs i'm just going to check if it dried but i can see not yet so these are um really uh, sets that you are we compose this way so it will be easy to work on projects so you will have uh, something to start so you have some textures to build then you have adhesives or and primers and then finally you have um finishing touches so different kinds of paint uh, and waxes on the top uh, of that and the very very important information it is it is not just the release it is also uh, the website that is available now if you will go to finavar at michaels.com uh, you will see amazing uh, videos tutorials and 101 tutorials for beginners showing you how you can use these products and uh, it is great for people all over the world because these products are available everywhere and you can start from very very basic projects if you are a little bit intimidated with the look you can see how quickly we got from a very very flat black box to something that has embellishments on the top so i'm just checking carefully because it's hot should be almost okay one more minute of drying so we have elements almost steady in place. Of course, some of the small art stones will come off, but this is natural. They are never staying in place. And uh, what is going to happen later? We have to add the basic color to cover all the um, stone color and of course the embellishments because we want to create the galaxy look. So the easiest way is to take black gesso. You can replace black gesso with impasto black acrylic paint just to make it easier for you if you are buying at michael's this comes in a kit so there's black gesso here then there's 3d gloss gel and then there's soft gel you can also use for gluing the art stones and there's even the white sand texture paste which is a little bit similar to the paste we have in the kit it's just one texture so if you're looking at adhesives you are looking at this baby blue color, which is soft gel, modeling paste, orange color, and 3D gloss gel. Gels are transparent, 
paste is white and not transparent at all. So that is the difference between them. So now I'm taking black gesso. This is this one. And of course you can buy black gesso in a jar, proper size, like this, no problem at all. This is the size that was available at the craft stores. And uh, now we are taking the brush and paint everything, trying not to take off too much of the art stones, if possible. Oh, you know, things happen so I would not cry if they come off a bit. I'm just worried about the embellishments really. They, these are the ones which are important here. I'm trying to find a clean brush. Can you imagine? You've seen my brushes already. They are not really clean. Okay. So now using the gesso, I'm just dabbing the color on the top. Good news is gesso is drying fast. So we don't have to wait for a long time. And you will see it is dry when it turns matte. Gesso in general is a primer, which means it's going to be easier to apply paint or any other medium on the top of my project now. Usually things like metal or plastic or glass are slippery and hard to repaint. But if you put gesso, it doesn't matter which color, it's going to be much easier. So you can see, we are adding color quite quickly. Oh, my, br worry, my brush was not behaving nicely. <laughs> and I, would, I, I just want to say that some people here, like Sharon, for example, making fun of my uh, ways of explaining things. But, you know, it's sometimes better to describe <laughs> instead of trying to be uh, too smart with your English, especially if it's not your first language. So, yeah, well... It is what it is. If you don't like it, you'd have to forgive me. This is the best I can do at the moment. So, look at this. This is basically covered enough to go f uh, to the next step. There's one annoying point, right? Step, go. And of course, if we have extra gesso, we quickly paint the spine and the back of the box too. Let me just do the front and the side for you so it will be faster for the video it's almost matte which means almost dry so i'm just taking my heat gun again and i will dry it until gesso is permanent well guys if you can still see some imperfections just forget about them because in the next step we are going to put more of the paints on the top so i guess nobody will see that anyway right and i told you it is not very important to keep the project beautiful all the way it's more important to finish in a nice way so i was trying to think what would be simple but very rewarding technique using uh, the products that i was planning to uh, show you today and <laughs> this is a um, great background to work with iridescent effects so I picked the set which is called Unicorn from Opal Magic um, paints I will show you again this is the Unicorn set that is available at Michael's now and I picked it not because of the colors you can see here but because of the colors that are going to show on black so what is basically going to happen i want to use blue and some kind of violet and we have two paints which are going to work this way so the first one is called uh, a blue violet which is not surprising i think and the next one is going to be pink blue again not a surprise but if you were thinking, oh, I can't do this project because we don't have Michaels in my country, that is not true. You can get other Opal Magics from the release that was available uh, on the market so two years ago. And you will be able to get very similar color palette. Let me show you these two paints you can use. This is going to be violet green. You can see there is a violet tone in it. And this is yellow blue and there is blue in it. Believe it or not, on this project, these colors will look the same because this is the magic of the Opal Magic paints. So these are acrylic paints. 
So uh, you can use them almost like watercolors if you want for a very short time. Later, they're going to dry permanent. So you don't have to seal this project with anything else. Once you dry your acrylic paints, you can simply just keep it as it is and uh, they are going to stay permanent. So you can come now with the you know, baby wipe and try to clean it off. Oh, sorry, nothing is going to happen to your project, which is, I think, great, because if it's going to be your treasure box, then you want it to be uh, safe. So, <laughs> yes, Opal Magic Paints, that was the release that I was so excited about. I can't even <laughs> explain how cool this paint is. So, just to show you how it works, I will open the ones that are coming in the unicorn kit. This is uh, blue violet and this is pink blue and just to compare this is green violet more pastel version and this is yellow blue uh, this yellow blue color is not available at Michael's right so just to show you this pink color on my black is going to be blue surprise and the same is going to happen with this yellow blue color magic right and just to show it again changing the color now let's go to blue violet it's turning violet right and the same for the green violet violet so I was not cheating you can use uh, these two colors instead of the ones that you have in Michael's kit. Okay, now to paint you need a brush and you will also need water bottle because we want to water down our paints and let them float a little bit just like watercolors. I am taking my brush again. Uh oh, out of focus. Is it okay now? I hope so. Okay, so I'm just starting with the blue, you know, galaxy colors. That should be a good solution, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm just dabbing that a little bit carelessly on my project. And then I water it down quickly and let it float. Mm -hmm. And then I switch to the this purple tone for extra magic in the project. And again, I let it float a little bit. If I see this is not enough, I'm going to add a little bit more here and there. Yep, a bit too much here. Okay. And it's so easy to create nice effects on the texture using iridescent or metallic paints. These are just the most beautiful uh, solutions and very simple. Uh, generally, metallic or iridescent and black, they really like to be together. This is something special about them and the way they reflect the light, it's just amazing. Okay, so that is enough for the first step. Let me dry to see what happens, right? If you have the spine ready, of course, you can repeat the same, the same result in here. And of course, don't forget about the water. Let's dry it to see what happens. Well, quite nice. Maybe one more layer here and there eh, for extra color. So I would prefer a little bit more blue on the heart. Mm -hmm. So I'm adding a bit more. Maybe a little bit more purple here. But it's really up to you. 
and in the case if something goes wrong and you have too much of the color you can always go back to the black gesso and repaint and you will have it uh, nicely done so it's very forgiving project so, so uh, just check it out just two colors of opal magic paint uh, black gesso and this is what we have and this is of course not finished yet it's almost there we would like to get some highlights in some places but to fully explain the magic of the opal magic paints i have white and black at the same time so you will see how the paints work because it seems to be a little bit misleading with this line and people are thinking that uh, why do i need so many pastel colors why do I need uh, so many shades of very similar tones? They are not similar. Uh, what is great about the boxes, you've got inspirational projects on them. So this one is just showing you only the colors which are in this one box. This is also information how the color works on light and on the dark surface. So you will see they are changing colors the way it is um, showing on our project. So. Let me just show you all three to explain how it works. There is color which is called uh, teal pink. So we expect this lovely turquoise green color is going to do some magic on the black. So here we start with the teal going into pink, right? So you can see if I was going for a bit warmer color palette, I would add this peachy pink color to my project also. The next one is the one we are using. This is uh, blue violet and from nice blue color to strong electric violet on the black. This is the one we used for extra touches here. And finally, my basic uh, co ba base color. This is the pink blue color starting from lovely, oh, sorry, lovely pink going into electric blue. So Opal Magics, no matter which set you are getting, are going to give you these amazing effects on the top of your project. So basically what you have are two colors in one pot, which means you can create different projects, Mary Pastel and Girly and Delicate if you prefer, especially with the lighter color sets, or you can get those grungy, dramatic looking effect on the darker surfaces. And this is really unique paint, so you have to check it out. If you didn't try it yet, you probably should. Now, we are missing the extra sparkle to have our full galaxy effect on the box. It's not far from the finish, so <laughs> I think uh, it is going to be really fun to do the last step. For this last step, I picked the unicorn hair paint, which comes in a Fantasy sp uh, Sparks paint set. Sparks are acrylic paints which are the same family as Opal Magics and Metallic, the same lovely liquid um, base of the strong acrylic paint, but uh, the shimmer used is different. It's very, very shiny. It reflects the light like a mirror. So in this kit, you have beautiful pinkish tone called butterfly spells, then the unicorn hair we are using now, and then mermaid sparkle. And just look at the example on the finished project. This is just magical paint. And uh, as I mentioned before, in um, countries outside US, uh, you could um, buy these uh, paints in single pots already for probably one year or two years. And also in the craft and art stores all over United States and Canada, independent stores carry them in single jars. So if you are not able to get to the set from Michaels or you would like to support your local store, which is great, please do that because it's very important. Uh, just uh, pick the single pots and you will be able to finish the project. I'm taking the last a brush I need today I hope right you can see all my brushes are terribly dirty it's just okay so now I have to add a bit of that uh, finish and it's good to have a bit of the paper towel or baby wipe 
or uh, something that will help you remove the excess of the paint. So what I do, I take a bit of this Sparks Unicorn Hair Paint, just look at that shine. And I'm patiently adding the finishing touch. The whole trick here is to really dry brush that paint. So every time when you dip the brush, please don't forget to clean off on a paper towel or a piece of cardboard, whatever you like to have. And then again, just like powdering your nose, touching the tops and everything nicely changes into this sparkly finish. <laughs> yes, Linda, they, my brushes have character. Yes, they have a lot of character. And they are very, you know, very, very special to me. They are my babies and I love them all. Okay. Look. And now, I will put one more layer just on the heart to make it super sparkly. Mm -hmm. super shiny so you can see we are very close to the finishing look and after that I'm just going to use a tiny bit more of the paint with some water to add the splatters and they are going to create this nice galaxy look on your finished project <laughs> So, mm -hmm. just by tapping the brush with the paint, I'm adding these magical stars. Remember to water down the paint a little bit, because otherwise it's not going to come off. And that would be the last step of our project. Just look at that. So after <laughs> gluing the elements, after adding the texture, we are, were using black gesso then we were using acrylic paints and I will put it all nicely together now for you so you will have uh, the look to show you how it works together okay so I was using art stones and stone effect paste right spark then 3d gloss there for growing black gesso, right? sparks paint for finishing touches and opal magic paint for egg effects of the galaxy then some embellishments of course and I think that was it yeah that was the last step so that is the whole project finished but to oh i forgot the stencil where's the stencil yep yeah, the stencil so that is the whole project finish and uh, you can see in very very few simple steps you are getting the result which is very eye-catching very rewarding and uh, i am really sure that anyone can do it if you think <laughs> you can't uh, apply the, uh, the paste through the stencil just take your time you can remove it if something goes wrong and then repeat it after that you can use the silicone brush or palette knife or even card and it's going to work for you it's good to have one bigger brush for the gesso and maybe one smaller for the finishing touches and uh, remember if you're using the gels for gluing please clean your brush otherwise they're going to be in trouble so 
just to show you something special this is the box that i was finishing for you before but there's something inside and you will have a closer look tomorrow at the um, my blog because i'm going to post it together with that video then i was using the stamps which are coming together with this stencil right so the uh, the stencil set and the stamp set and i created this starry night shadow box and it says look for the magic it's a gift for my husband and i hope he's going to look for more magic in his life but this is how you can use your box of course it may be jewelry box it may be atc box it may be embellishment box but it may be also magical box like this guys if you have any questions i'm very happy to help and i'm very very thrilled to see so many of you joining and um, i hope this was a um, good example for you to see that mixed media is really simple and in a few steps you can create something really nice and the most important part it is fun you can use anything you like to decorate uh, your project it may be a box it may be a, a, a book it may be a frame it may be any kind of home decor and with different combinations of the products the possibilities are almost endless thank you so much for joining me and it was so lovely to have you here on my uh, Facebook page please tell your friends if they were not able to see it uh, to visit uh, this page again and to watch the video and I hope you really had a good time and mixed media minutes was something that you would like to see in the future if you want to see more of the simple mixed media techniques and some ideas and maybe some new product sneak peeks let me know and I'm just experimenting with that really I'm not sure if I'm doing that right or wrong so if there's something I could improve also let me know please check the website two websites you should visit is finever at michaels.com which is uh, full of simple step-by-step uh, -step tutorials and videos really uh, suitable for any person including beginners and the second one is finever.com which is my main website where my design team members and me we are giving you full uh, tutorials and inspirations we have information about the product we've got videos step-by-step -step photos these are m bigger and smaller projects not just the very uh, very simple ones we would love to see you there and we also of course use other social media so if you like to look at the pictures please check uh, my instagram account which is finavar studio and also my personal finavar and if you love prima because i'm sure you love prima check out prima blog and also prima instagram account which is full of beautiful inspiration let uh, let everybody know uh, about the release at michael's because it's really important for us that people will really have the information let them know it is the, the inspiration is waiting for them and i'll be very happy to see the results of your experiments with these techniques on your product so if you're making something don't forget to tag me so i can have a look so well guys thank you so much and i hope you had a good time watching me thank you so much thank you for joining me in my studio and well see you soon it was finavar from her studio mixed media minutes uh, release at michael's and uh, prima marketing bye bye